Welcome to the first of six Lenten Reflections on American Saints. Our first saint will be the North American Martyrs, who came to the New World in the 1600s from France to evangelize to the Native American people. What's wonderful about these guys is that they wanted to meet the people where they were, so they were gifted with languages and learned how to speak Huron, their native language, so they could communicate with the peoples where they were. Saints of the Americas is a series that seeks to share information on the life and times of the saints of the Catholic Church celebrated in the Americas. Your program hosts are Father Jim Corda and Father Jack LaBelle. Welcome to our show. We're going to talk now about St. Isaac Jogue and St. John de Brebeuf. Uh, we know that they're French Jesuits, uh, but they're missionaries that come uh, to the New World uh, in the middle of the 17th century. Let's talk um, not only about them, but what's going on in this great wilderness, this vast wilderness. Well, exactly that. It is a vast wilderness. And, and while we have our 21st century mindset of what it is to be in North America, mm -hmm. you know, to be in the United States or what our neighbors to the north in Canada experience, it was a vast wilderness, mm -hmm. but there were already people living in that vast wilderness. It was the Native Americans. And so often what happens is when a European country or another country, um, you know, seeks to expand, uh, much like the English coming to the United States and then the Spanish and the French, uh, we see that both the English and the French uh, start to expand into the territory to the north, into Canada, and um, a desire to kind of just set up shop mm -hmm. and, and know what they knew uh, in their other land. And so certainly uh, they come and they encounter these Native Americans and they come with their mindset of governance, they come with their mindset of religion, and they seek to want to impose that in some uh, ways on the people that are already living here. And so we see that the French Jesuits were the first missionaries uh, to Canada seeking to Christianize uh, the Native American population. And it's interesting, um, as we had talked uh, prior to the taping, when we think of uh, uh, Canada now, uh, main, mainly parts of it, uh, it's extremely Catholic, extremely mm -hmm. French. And so that influence uh, among these first missionaries uh, really uh, was, was long lasting. Uh, l let's talk about that missionary work. We know that they were coming to a country that uh, was really not established with uh, uh, any institutions or governance other than what was taking place in the Native American community. And so we also see that their uh, coming to uh, North America uh, was, uh, they experienced some great resistance. And the resistance probably was because they were sharing this, this faith with those who probably didn't understand it. But we see uh, in the lives of some of the people uh, experiencing and, and grasping and, and taking the faith onto themselves. Uh, but that was not something that happened readily. It was a slow process. And we see these two people plus their companions coming in this situation and then ultimately experiencing martyrdom. Let's talk about that whole sense of what a martyr is and why we lift those people up to the, um, to the level of saints because of that experience. Well, I think the first part of, of your question uh, was that, that sense of the missionary work. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it moves into the, the martyrdom, which goes hand in hand in many cases. Mm -hmm. I, I think the missionary work that um, Isaac and, and John and their companions and, and many others like them 
were called to, was no different than what the missionary work of the early church was and why there were challenges and resistance. Because although it's a new land, there's still structures. It's a tribal structure. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it's no different than the, than what Jesus met himself, you know, his teaching and his preaching and what he came to offer struck against the governmental authorities and their desire to rule. And so it's, it's very similar, uh, even though you don't have that, that structure of, of Rome in Jerusalem, you have tribal institutions that they have their own way of doing things, their own governance. Certainly a very um, dominating society, a very male hierarchical society. You know, you come in and you want to try to teach and preach that all are created equal and all are created in the image and likeness of God and, and all of that love and forgiveness. It strikes against all of that structure that's there. So um, it's those that are in authority are usually the ones that are most opposed. Um, because the ones who are most readily susceptible to conversion and to this faith are the ones that are being, you know, uh, kind of um, kept down. Mm -hmm. And so you have all that, that difficulty. So then we want to transition into the, the sense of martyrdom. It is that sense of, of living the life of Christ, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that at all cost we must preach the gospel, regardless of what it might mean to our own safety, our own well-being, that our purpose and our call is to preach Christ crucified, but it is that crucifixion that ultimately leads to the hope of the kingdom. It's interesting because that really kind of leads to something that uh, Isaac Job, uh, when he returned to Paris after uh, his first capture and torture, uh, he wrote this to his superior. He said, yes, Father, I want whatever our Lord wants, even if it costs a thousand lives. You know, so there's that sense that uh, he knew what he was getting into when he came uh, to uh, North America. And when he entered into uh, this tribal um, area where he was going to share the faith, he knew that it was not going to be easy, but he was willing to lay his life on the line, similar to, as you had said, as Jesus has. And that's why we really elevate the martyrs, because what they've done is they've united themselves to Christ and his suffering on the cross, which is the perfect act of of worship and praise. Let's um, briefly then talk about uh, that whole sense of evangelization and how important that we continue that great mission of evangelization. And this is what these early French Jesuits were all about. And that's what missionaries are all about. And that's what we as church are all about, evangelization. Well, and we've spoken in other episodes about how that missionary work and evangelization go hand in hand, and maybe the one is built on the other. Uh, you know, for Isaac and John and their companions, they were missionaries in the truest sense of bringing the word of God to a people who have never heard that word, uh, or never even heard of who Jesus was or what these gospels mean. Um, the transition perhaps into evangelization is we live in a world now where even if someone has never lived a faith, it would be very difficult to say that they have absolutely no knowledge of who Jesus is or who or what the Gospels are. Um, you know, you don't have to be a person of faith to have that academic knowledge. Mm -hmm. Jesus is a historical figure. The Gospels are writings. Um, but it's how to invite people to take that to heart and to live it. And that work is exactly what the missionaries did. It might be to a different crowd or a different audience, one that already has some knowledge, but it's the same work of how to internalize it and then live it. We're gonna close with the opening prayer of the mass, which says, Father, you consecrated the first beginnings of the faith in North America by the preaching and martyrdom of Saints John and Isaac and their companions. By the help of their prayers, may the Christian faith continue to grow throughout the world. And we see that faith continue to grow through the lives of early martyrs and through our lives as well. Stay with us, we'll be right back. 